What is going on gamers? Today we have a very special video because we're gonna be comparing three different gaming PCs all at different price points. Now I'm making this video because there are probably some people out there that wanna figure out how much money they need to spend for a certain amount of performance. So that is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be comparing a budget $200 gaming PC to a $500 mid-range PC and then a $1,500 gaming PC. We're gonna be taking a look at all three of these PCs today and we're also gonna be doing some gaming on them so you guys can kinda of see what the performance is like at each tier. So hopefully after you guys go through this entire video, this gives you a good idea on how much money you need to spend and maybe it'll give you some confidence if you're that guy trying to build a $200 gaming PC wondering, is it worth it? Hopefully my video will answer that today. So a couple of the computers that we're gonna be looking at today are actually right behind me. So we have that PC right there, which is the mid-range. And then we have this PC, which is the budget build that's literally made of foam board. Yeah, it's not a real case. It may look decent, but it's basically cardboard. And then the last PC is recording this, so you guys can't really see it. But yeah, it's, it's right there hiding from you guys, and we'll take a closer look in a little. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the monstrosity behind me called the $200 gaming PC made out of a foam case. So first up, we have this beast literally made of foam board because of money. If you guys do wanna build this in a real case, add $50, it's more like a $250 PC. But if you guys are willing to go the extra mile and build your own case out of foam board, it's $200. I'm not gonna be able to go through every single part in this PC, but we'll go over all the main components just because I already have videos literally on all three of these PCs going over the entire build. So for this PC, we have a Xeon E3 1225 for the processor. We have eight gigabytes of beautiful DDR3 RAM. Then we have a GTX 750 Ti and all in all, not bad specs for $200. Making this inside of a foam case is definitely interesting to say the least. And it's a little weird building in a foam case because you don't get switches and all that. You have to like make them yourself or rip them out of another case. So it's interesting. Like I said, you guys might just wanna spend the extra $50 to get a real PC case. But I think you guys are gonna be pleasantly surprised whenever we compare this to the other PCs in gaming. Next up, we have the mid-range PC, and this one's actually pretty special because this is technically my first PC ever. This PC is in a different case now, and it's basically just the backdrop to my videos. Kinda sad, but it is for someone else, they just never use it. So in this computer, we have an i5-4690K, still at its base clock, we have another eight gigabytes of beautiful DDR3 RAM, nothing but the best, mostly joking there. And then we have a GTX 1060. I love this graphics card. I got a crazy deal on it. It was an open box on Newegg for like $150 back when I bought it. And if you guys look at the price of it now, like it's, it's wild. All right, next PC, we have my PC that I'm actually using right now. It is a certified gaming PC, if you know what I mean. We have a Ryzen 7 3800X. We have 16 gigabytes of even more beautiful DDR4 RAM. Then we have a 1070 in here. I think this graphics card would probably qualify as a high-end graphics card. It was almost like $500 when I bought it new but now there's way better stuff out there. This one is a few years old, but that is why high-end gaming PCs can get really expensive because they're literally graphics cards that are still worth more than this entire PC. So yeah, those are the three PCs that are gonna be battling it out today. So let's see how the $200 cardboard gaming PC holds up when it comes to game. We're gonna be testing three games, Grand Theft Auto, Fortnite, and Minecraft. I think this is a pretty fair group of games to test. I think it'll be a pretty good baseline for you guys to try and compare these PCs. So Grand Theft Auto, we're gonna be playing this at 1080p, 60 hertz, normal settings, the same exact settings for every game and PC. So whenever I did the benchmark, we were averaging around 100 frames per second, which is pretty good for the PC and the price point that it is at and considering it's made of cardboard. Definitely playable, but if you guys wanna like stream or record, you guys are probably gonna notice a pretty big jump in quality of gameplay. So if you guys are just trying to game, this PC will work, but if you guys are trying to become the next ninja, not so much. Fortnite got 110 FPS on average, same exact settings as stated before. Minecraft was able to get 150 FPS. And I'm pretty confident that you guys could find some shaders that would still run on Minecraft and get you closer to that 60 FPS mark. If you guys did want to live stream Minecraft, pretty sure this PC would do that just fine, probably closer to 60 frames per second. 
All right, so now that we've covered that PC, let's move on to the mid tier called the $500 PC. So like I was saying earlier, all the same settings, GTA was able to get 130 FPS. That is a 30 FPS gain just with this PC. Fortnite got 150 frames per second, which is pretty good, definitely at the point where you probably could live stream and record with ease and probably still average around 60 FPS that target. Minecraft was at 160 FPS, wasn't too much better than the $200 gaming PC, but I'm pretty sure it's just being limited by its RAM that or the processors aren't that great and the graphics cards could easily do more. Something is being bottlenecked in both of these PC builds when it comes to Minecraft. It would take a little bit more looking into to really judge what is going on there and why the FPS is so close to the $200 gaming PC, but basically all I could say for now, something is being bottlenecked to an extent. All right, so now let's look at my PC, the $1,500 one, and I'm not flexing on you guys. This PC isn't even that good. It's just PC equipment is expensive. So GTA got an average of 160 FPS, which was a bit lower than I was expecting, to be honest, for the price of this PC. Just goes to show that GTA can be pretty hard to run. Even with my PC, if I go all the way to ultra settings, we're probably closer to 60 frames per second, which is completely fine for gameplay, but if you guys are trying to record, you're probably gonna have to record at 30 frames per second instead. Fortnite got 250 FPS on average, which was pretty amazing. You could easily stream and record with that. You guys could even throw the settings up to probably high or ultra and still record or stream. Minecraft had an average of 180 FPS, which was fantastic. And I have personally ran shaders on this PC with no problems. And actually I've ran shaders on the $500 PC with no problems as well. So that is how the three PCs performed in GTA, Fortnite, and Minecraft. Well, there you guys have it. That is my comparison between all three of these PCs. Hopefully you guys have a better idea on how much money you guys need to actually spend to get into the gaming PC market. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, smash that like button down below. Really helps the channel out. Also consider subscribing if you guys enjoy this type of content. I also have several PC builds out there all in these different price ranges. So if you guys are interested in looking at these builds, just go ahead and check out my channel. I have a playlist just full of them. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video.